Welcome back to Class Farms, guys. Kai over here with Jason. What's going on, folks? And today we're going to talk about everything thermal optic, thermal technology in a nutshell. What is it and how does it work? And we're also going to do some pros and cons comparison to, you know, when it comes to thermals and also night vision. Yeah. So with that being said, this is kind of your wheelhouse, Jason. A little bit. No, a little bit about, or a lot about a little bit of it. So thermal technology, right? What we know as, you know, seeing things in the infrared spectrum or exactly. what it comes back to us, seeing heat signatures, right? Great for, you know, first of all, IDing and also, you know, surveying out what's Detecting out there. Detecting and identifying there you go. the uh, targets, exactly. Yeah, two of those things, right? So with this optic, we have really an all built in one, right? So it is a thermal imager and also mm -hmm. it acts as an optic itself. So you actually do zero this. There's many other ones. What do you be, you know, Cody clip on thermal intensifier or, a um, you know standalone clip one yep. clip on that you yep. put in the way mm -hmm. of an optic, but this one specifically, this is an all built-in one. So one of the biggest pros about this, right? It's one thing, right? That's right. Put this on, I zero it, I'm good to go. One of the bad sides about it is because it's all got all this stuff going on, it is such a battery hog, right? That's right. So yep. especially depending on ambient temperatures, that does play a factor, but it is great because it all keeps it in one. It's right? digital, a lot of stuff going mm -hmm. on, uh, so it definitely. When it comes to, com when, it, when compared yeah. to a night vision, which yeah, we have like over analog there. Analog night vision, right? Analog, it is, mm -hmm. it, it definitely eats batteries because right. it's digital, right. lots of stuff going on. Uh, honestly, when it comes to the technology, right? The mm -hmm. thermal, it's different than night vision. A lot mm -hmm. of folks are thinking like, if I've got a night vision mm -hmm. uh, at home, then I'm good to go. Or if I got thermal, then I don't need night vision, vice versa. Right. Which, that is not true. They are completely different. Right. When it comes to night vision technology, we did a video, we compared yep. the two. Mm -hmm. You guys definitely can check that out to see that. When it comes to thermal, in a very nutshell, very quickly, infrared spectrum. This is divided into like three categories, near, infrared, mid infrared, and thermal infrared. Mm -hmm. Now the first two, mid and near, or near and mid, they re refer to reflecting light. Now thermal infrared refers to emitting light from an object, like heat, mm -hmm. right? We all emit heat. And this is great at detecting heat, which has different settings. Yep. And you can actually use this when compared to night vision, yep. also during the day. Yep. And that's another thing. This doesn't matter whether it's ambient light or non-ambient mm -hmm. light. So that's a huge plus for it, right? You don't have to worry about dense fog. You don't have to worry about any of those things. So no matter what, provided you've got this in your field of range or your detection area, mm -hmm. it's going to pick it up. Now there are some nuances, right? So mm -hmm. this thing is digital, not analog. So there are some things that it happen that it does. It does process stuff at a little bit slower than mm -hmm. analog so you have that little bit of latency not saying that your shots on target are going to be slow or anything or you're going to see it slow it's on just, average they're 60 hertz yeah right, 60 yeah. hertz so it does another thing it's measured in hertz exactly. right also resolution so if you think about this this is a digital camera jumped up on steroids that reads heat so yeah. it's measured in resolution so that's another thing um now there is a thing to such thing where it flips on where it checks itself which is called nuking which is non-uniform correction. So that's the image intensifier or the image processor saying, hey, I need to reset. I've gotten all my information. I mm -hmm. need to reset to give you new information. Yep. So that does happen sporadically. Yeah, so there's, uh, it's great information. Mm -hmm. There's some pros and cons to obviously thermal. So mm -hmm. Why would you want thermal? If you had to pick between night vision and thermal, obviously they're completely different. But uh, thermal, if you're out in a field, you're gonna have a limited distance, mm -hmm. right? Your range is gonna be limited based on the product, the unit that you have. Mm -hmm. And also it's digital, so it's gonna get latency, pixelations and all that stuff. Some of those like cons. And uh, there is a detection range mm -hmm. and there is an identifying identification range. Right. And they actually vary depending on the unit. Correct. So you can actually be in a field and you can detect heat signature, which could be actually, you could actually get some false readings too when it comes to a living being, also a non-living being like a rock, right? Mm -hmm. When uh, the sun goes down, for example, mm -hmm. the rocks in a field stay warmer than the ground itself. So you can actually get a heat signature from a rock and right. you could actually think that is a living person or, a, or an animal. But that's, that's a detection range. And uh, when you get a little bit closer, you get an identification range where you can actually identify Right. That is a person or a game, whatever that is. So it is kind of limited on that, but it is actually very good compared to a night vision because there are things that with night vision you cannot see. Like you can see pretty much an entire field, but somebody can easily, or a game can easily hide. 
but with a thermal, you can identify them just like that from a distance. Right, and there's various thing, ways that you can actually view through this, right? There's many common ways that you can actually see it. You've got many different spectrums that you got red hot, right? Oh yeah, those settings, yep. exactly. You got white hot, Mm -hmm. You've got white hot with thermal like red to yeah. let you know like what's going on and you've got black hot and you also have outline. There's right? those variations mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's it's all personal preference. However you want to see it, however you want to do it. A lot of people use the, you know, the white hot to show, hey, this instance is hotter, so it's gonna be a little bit more wider than what it is. To me, my personal preference, if I'm gonna use a thermal, I like to use black hot because just the way my eyes are set up, yeah. anything that's darker on the screen, I know is either gonna be you know, hotter or emitting more heat, so it brings my eye automatically to it. So. Yeah, and there's another very good thing about a thermal is like, let's just talk about a pro. If it's foggy, like adverse conditions, right. smoke, or whatever, you're gonna actually, the infrared uh, light is going to puncture right through that. Right. And you'll still get that heat signature, which with night vision, whatever your eyes can see, that's pretty much what you can see. With infrared or thermal mm -hmm. technology, you're actually able to penetrate through those uh, adverse conditions, which is really cool, especially for law, enforce, law enforcement military use. Right. But also hunting, dude. I yeah. mean, Hunting, you're you're seeing those heat signatures. As a matter of fact, you're even seeing hoof prints, hoof marks, exactly. anything that could be you know left by a natural uh, state. It, you can see it. So that's. I was talking to my friend uh, Jim Foreman. So shout out to him, uh, former SEAL Team Six Master Chief. He was telling me that they're in Afghanistan or op, and he they use night vision and thermal kind of integrated fusion. Fusion, exactly. Mm. He said they're amazing. He's like they're in a field. He's got his night vision going on, and. They can't see anybody like they're able to see their environments but they don't see any adversaries and then he just twists his uh thermal on he's like five meters there's two adversaries they got their guns they got ak's they're on the ground they're just hiding and they were even holding their breath and jim was able to see their breath kind of emit this heat signature mm -hmm. and he was able to see that fog kind of move mm -hmm. he's like whoa there's something that just five meters he said the guys had the drop on them, but they were just hiding. So because of the thermal technology, he was able to see adversaries and they were able to take, they were able, they were able to take them out. So there you go. Is There's thermal that. right for you? Maybe in conjunction with a night, night vision, vision. Oh, 100%. So it being a, a fusion type deal, <laughs> or maybe um, a regular optic with a night vision clip on and then something of a yeah. thermal to maybe spot. I mean, that's those are all great yeah. you know, things. I mean, thermals, again, a lot of pros that we talked about. The cons be obviously battery life. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have some extra batteries on you. And also when it comes to identifying faces, they're not as good as obviously night vision, right. especially if you're talking about like CQB environments or something near. And also the range. Mm -hmm. the, is very limited when compared to night vision. Mm -hmm. Price, now thermal optics are, they're getting a little better nowadays. Mm -hmm. The price is kind of going down, but they're still pretty expensive, right? right. You're, plan, you're If you want to spend, if you want to get something decent, you're gonna spend a few thousand dollars. Yeah, like this it, one, this one's like what, MSRP? 24, 2499, something like that, yeah. hard, what is that, 640, right? Mm -hmm. 640 also. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, and this is 640 because this has got a, a larger uh, battery and some other good, cool uh, specs to it, so it's pretty decent. For $2,500, I think it's pretty pretty good. Yeah. And uh, also weight, you know, they kind of, they tend to weigh a little bit. Correct. Uh, so, with that being said, when it comes to Let's say your AR-15, Yeah. what's your ideal thermal setup? Me personally, like I said, I like to have redundancy. So this being an all-in-one would not be my go-to. Mm -hmm. I would go normally for a flip out of the way or clip on version. So mm -hmm. if I do, I can run it on a Wilcox mount on a dovetail. I can put it on there, use it to get in the glass, see what's going on, uh, determine my threat, flip it out of the way if I need to. And then I can just run my knots um, on as well and run passively if I need to shoot. So that's just me. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, if I'm out in the field, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, at home, I'd probably want a little uh, offset one. But if I'm in the field, I'd want a standalone device, mm -hmm. but smaller, a little bit smaller, because it's weight savings and I don't want that bulkiness, and have a uh, offset red dot, something like that, mm -hmm. if I'm in the field. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. So that way I can kind of identify, just like this one that we have over here, which I think you guys are probably thinking, why is that at 90 degrees? It is not this. <laughs> and then you just get back on it. So this is basically, you're at a range, I don't know, 500 yards, 300 yards, whatever it is, you find your target, or you try to identify, you're fully maxed in, on, zoomed in on this one. Use your red dot to kind of identify the location and then get back on this yep. uh, 
thermal. So that kind of helps you tremendously. That's yep. why it's there. It yep. helps you get into that uh, <clears throat> zone engagement space and then this actually gets you on the threat or engagement. Exactly. So, so guys, in this video, we didn't want to go into super technical yeah. details about thermal uh, technology, all of that stuff and lose you guys. We wanted to kind of give you a simpler version what thermal technology is, how does it work, and all of that stuff. And in this case, we, uh, part uh, 640, want to kind of illustrate how it actually looks for you guys, so you guys can basically understand this better. That's, that's it. I understand things this way, dude. Hmm. Somebody goes into super technical stuff, and I think that's very good. I kind of get lost. I hear you, man. I, I tend to geek out when it comes yeah. to stuff like this because there's a lot of information, especially when you're spending money on this. You really want to know what you're getting, what you're bang for your buck. I mean, I'm the kind of guy, like I'd say, I don't know the name of it or whatever. I just know the sound it makes. When it kills a man. Yeah. Real original on that one. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let us know in the comment section your thoughts about thermal optics, what's your experience level, and if you guys actually have any other tricks when it comes to thermals. Let us know in the comment section. And at the same time, check out a specific website. Uh, CF Contest, Contest but you have all. to Google it. And there may or may not be, you know. Some... What if they're using Bing? Bing it. <laughs> Just CF Contest. Maybe they, should, maybe they should ask Jeeves. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. CF Contest, you'll know what I'm talking about. With that being said, guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your business. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one. In the heat.